Hello and welcome to this session in which we would look at an exercise that deals with the four types of adjustments, which are two will be deferrals and two accruals. Adjusting entries give students many problems, and this is where students start to get lost in a typical intermediate or a financial accounting course. The first thing I want to show you is this. We have four types of adjustments. Two are considered deferrals and two are considered accruals, okay? So as I go through each adjustment, I'm gonna to explain to you whether this is a deferral or an accrual. Deferral will have, we could defer expenses, we could have deferral of expenses, we could have deferrals of revenues. We could have accrual of expenses and accrual of revenues as well. So those are the four types. So one, two, three, four so it's very important to understand what which adjustments am i dealing with is this a deferral or an accrual if it's a deferral is this a deferral expense or an accrual expense why this is important because once you know whether it's a deferral or an accrual whether it's an expense or a revenue then you should be able to determine the adjusting entry very very easily okay let's start to take a look at ex examples that illustrate those concepts Adam Corporation rented a storage space to LSC on November 1st for three months for a total cash of 36,000 received in advance. Okay, so first let's prepare the entry on November 1st, year one, and we are assuming our year end is December 31st. So if we received 3,600 of cash in advance, what do we do? We're gonna debit cash. So this is start with the easy part, start with cash. Now this cash is received in advance. Well, it means we have not earned it yet because we did not provide the rental service, the rental capacity to the, to the tenant. Therefore, what we credit is something called unearned rent revenue. Now, this is the entry that took place on November 1st. This is not the adjusting entry. This is what happens on November 1st. Now, prepare the prepare the appropriate journal entries assuming year end is December 31st. Well, if year end December 31st, what does that mean? It means from November, so on a timeline, this is what happens. We got the cash here, this is November 1st, and for the, the tenant stayed for November and stayed for December. As a result, we earned two months worth of rent. Well, how much is two months worth of rent? Well, if they paid us 3,600 for three months, we could assume that each month is 1,200. So on December 31st, we have to make an adjusting entry. What type of an adjusting entry is this? What type of an adjusting entry? Well, what happened in this situation? We received the cash before the revenue. So what did we do with the revenue? We deferred the revenue. So this is a deferral of revenue. Why? Because we received the cash first. Notice on November 1st, we received the cash. We're gonna record the revenue later. What type of adjusting entry do we do when we have a deferral revenue? Well, we're gonna debit the unearned revenue. We're gonna reduce the unearned revenue, which is, this is a liability. And we're gonna turn it into actual rent revenue of 2,400. From a T account perspective, this is, what I, this is what you are looking at. So this is the unearned, let me just write it a little bit more, better if I can. This is unearned revenue. I started with 3,600 on November 1st. Now I debited this balance 2,400 because I earned 2,400. My remaining balance is 1,200. So you might be asked, what's the remaining balance for the unearned revenue as of December 31st? Well, you would say the answer is the unearned revenue balance is 1,200. If you are asked, what is the journal entry? The journal entry is you have to debit unearned revenue and turn it into revenue 2,400. Then a month later, February 1st, we're going to have to earn the remaining 1,200. We're going to debit unearned rent revenue 1,200, thus bringing it down to zero and credit rent revenue 1,200 to earn the revenue. So what we dealt with is something called deferral of revenue and deferral of revenue, we debit the unearned revenue and we credit revenue, assuming this is what we did initially, assuming we debited cash, credited unearned revenue. So we are adjusting unearned revenue. Before we proceed any further, I would like to remind you whether you are an accounting student or a CPA candidate to take a look at my website, farhatlectures.com. 
I don't replace your CPA review course nor your accounting course. My motto is helping CPA candidate and accounting student one at a time. How? By providing you with resources that's going to help you do better. Lectures, multiple choice, true false, exercises. Also on my website, you can find out how well your university is doing on the CPA exam. My CPA resources are aligned with your Becker, Wiley, Roger, and Gleam. So it's very easy to go back and forth between my material and your CPA review course. I also give you access to 1,500 previously released AI CPA questions with detailed solution. If you have not connected with me on LinkedIn, please do so. Take a look at my LinkedIn recommendation. Like this recording on YouTube, subscribe, share it with others, connect with me on Instagram, Facebook. I'm trying to grow my Instagram followers. Twitter and Reddit. Let's take a look at the second example. Adam Company weekly payroll paid on Fridays for a total of 10,000. Simply put, Adam Company every week they pay 10,000 worth of payroll and they paid on Friday. The employee work a five day work week. So they work from Monday through Friday and they get paid on Friday. Let's assume December 31st falls on a Wednesday. Okay, let's see what we are looking at from a map perspective. From a map perspective, it looks something like this. This is the last week of the year. So this is Wednesday, December 31st. So this is where the year ends. Now, the employee will be paid. So this will be January 1st, and this will be January 2nd. The employee will be paid here, okay? So what happened is this. The employee worked Monday, they worked Tuesday, and they worked Wednesday. So they work three days, but for those three days, they were not paid. Why? Because they will not be paid until the next period, which is starting January 2nd. So what do we have to do? Well, the company will have to accrue, will have to accrue three days worth of expenses, three days of salary expenses, three days. So if we pay 10,000 per week over five days, each day, the employee get paid $2,000. Well, 2,000 times three, then we're gonna have to accrue salary expense of 6,000. We're gonna have to accrue salary expense of 6,000. We debit salary expense, we credit salaries payable. What type of adjusting entry is this? This is, as I just told you, accrued expense. It's an accrual, it's an accrued expense, or sometimes it's called accrued liability. It doesn't really matter. It means we recorded an expense. We recorded a liability that will be paid later. When is that later? January 2nd. Let's go ahead and get paid. On January 2nd, we're going to pay the employees, not get paid. We're the company. We're going to pay the employees. Well, what's going to happen is we're going to, when we pay them, we're going to have to remove this liability. We're going to have to remove this liability. We're going to have to record January 1st and January 2nd, which amount to 4,000 worth of expenses. And we're going to pay them $6,000 in cash. We're going to pay them, I'm sorry, $10,000 in cash. So the $10,000 in cash will pay off the liability from December 31st and would record 4,000 of expense in year two and 6,000 of expense in year one. Simply put, the total paid is 10,000. The total expense is 10,000. All what we did in this period is 6,000 was recorded in year one, 4,000 was recorded in year two, but the total expense is 10,000 and this is an accrued expense. And an accrued expense, the typical entry is you debit an expense you credit the related liability. What I mean by this, if you debit salaries expense, you debit credit salaries payable. If you debit rent expense, you credit rent payable. If you debit XYZ expense, you will credit XYZ payable. Let's take a look at this third example. On October 1st, Adam accepted $12,000 four month 10% note receivable for a sale. This is on October 1st. So what happened is we made a sale, we made a sale and we accepted a note. We're gonna debit notes receivable 12,000, credit sales revenue 10, 12,000, not 10,000, 12,000. So this is what happened October 1st. Now the note has a 10% interest and we will not be paid this note until four months later. What's gonna happen is this, from October till December, the note will accrue interest. It means we earned interest. How much interest are we going to accrue? We're gonna take 12,000 times 10% times 312. And if my math is right, this is gonna give us $300 of accrual, of accrued interest revenue. Interest that we received, but we're not gonna be paid for it on December 31st, but we have to record as revenue. Therefore, we debit interest receivable, $300. We credit interest revenue, $300. This is an accrual, but accrual revenue. In accrual revenue, you always debit a receivable 
credit a revenue. And this is what I explained in my lesson, but this is basically a review. Now here comes February 1st, when we actually get paid, when the customer paid us the full amount. How much is the customer going to pay us? Well, the customer owes us $12,000 times 10% times 412. And that's gonna give us $400, $400 of interest. So the, the customer will pay 12,000 plus 400 of interest. The customer will pay 12,400. 12,000 is for the note itself and 400 for the interest. Now, we have to record one month worth of revenue from January 1st to February 1st. That's worth $100 because if we take 12,000 times 10% times 112, that's gonna give us $100. We're gonna have to record an additional $100 in interest revenue. We're gonna remove the $300 of interest receivable here, this interest receivable. Now we we got paid for that, so that's that's gone. And we remove the note itself of $12,000. So this is the entry that will take place on February 1st, on February 1st. So notice what happened in total, notice what happened in total, we recorded interest revenue of 400, okay? Because the interest receivable debit, the interest receivable credit makes it zero. So simply put, we received cash of 12 and the notes receivable credit 12,000, debit 12,000 is gone. So basically here's what's left in this whole entry after all things said and done is this. Uh, we debited cash 12,400, credited sales revenue 12,000, credited interest revenue a total of 400. That's all what's left. So we make a sale, for 12,000 and we received and we earned 400 of interest revenue. Everything else is the receivables, the notes receivables and the interest receivable are basically canceled each other. Let's take a look at the four, and by the way, this is, as, as I said, it's an accrual revenue. Let's take a look at this fourth type of adjusting entry. On uh, this uh, Adam company purchased $500 worth of supplies on December 1st. December 1st, we debit supplies, we credit cash for 500. That's, that's basically what we do. A physical count a physical count of the supplies on December 31st reveals that 200 of the supplies remain on hand. So we have 500 worth of supplies. So we started with 500. Then when we did the count, we still have 200 left. Now be careful, what, what you are being told here is how much left. It means you have to determine how much was consumed. How much was consumed was 300. So what do you have to do? You have to record the consumption of 300. What do you do? You debit supplies expense of 300 and you credit supplies. And this is called the type of the adjusting entry. This is called either, you, you wanna call it a deferral expense or prepaid. Sometimes they call the prepaid expense in your textbook. It's the same thing. Simply put, we paid for the expense first, then we expensed it later. We paid for the supplies on December. We didn't expense it till December 31st when we consume it. This is a deferral and a deferral expense. Typically we debit an expense and credit the related asset. So notice here, we debited supplies expense, we credited supplies. There's one type of prepaid expense that's a little bit different. It's called depreciation expense. And we'll discuss this in a separate recording or in a separate example. What should you do now? Go to farhatlectures.com, subscribe, work multiple choice questions, additional resources that's gonna help you do better on your exam, on your CPA exam. It's gonna, it's gonna help you in your accounting career. Don't shortchange yourself, invest in yourself. The CPA exam is worth it. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.